Hello, you join me on a very late night, a recording session here in Chicago. Uh, the weather's kind of miserable tonight. I've spent the uh, whole day um, <laughs> taking care of my family. I'm exhausted, but uh, I'm here in front of my bookcase, I am, uh, which also has some boxes still stacked in front of it because we haven't done any, had any time to do anything with them. Uh, but here we are. Or are we? Because with the pop of a cork, suddenly we are on a magical journey. We are on the, we are back on the Cane Juice World Tour, which I kind of uh, forgot about a little bit a couple of months ago. Um, to review, this is a series I've been doing partly to work my way through the enormous collection of Cane Juice based rums I have lying around, and also partially to showcase the enormous variety both stylistic and just geographical of of that style and today we are going to thailand we are going to uh uh phuket uh which is an uh, island off the west coast um this is shalong bay this is their high proof it is 57 percent alcohol i do appreciate they're calling this um a high proof rather than an overproof because well, for many, for many reasons. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, I would also, also accepted strong rum. Um, anyways, it's 57%. This is uh, vintage 2020, uh, batch number one with a whole bunch of zeros in front. It's batch one. Made from pure Thai sugarcane distilled on French copper stills. It looks like um, a, you know, very s small continuous setup. And uh, yeah, that's about all I know. Uh, the, the distillery is, I wrote it down here somewhere, Antamon Distillers. Um, you look at their site, it does look like something meant to appeal more to tourists than to, um, you know, locals. But hey, that doesn't mean they're, they're not putting out good stuff. So let's see what they got here. Um, ooh. So on the nose, initially, my my thinking is this is, I don't like to use terms like this. It's stylistically closer to something like a traditional French agricole style than to, you know, say, where you're going to get in a Charanda or a Claren. You're not getting, you know, wild fermentation here. Uh, this is, you know, this feels like it's, you know, this is very clean and controlled and in style. That being said, there is a certain... Mm, I'm, I'm tempted to say rustic quality, but that's dumb for many reasons. First of all, it's like, like low-key racist, but also like it's just not very descriptive. There's something about the way that there's an herbaceous thing sitting on top of a very kind of fruity thing, which is, I know that doesn't sound unusual in, in this, in the cane juice kind of context, but it, it, it feels interesting and new to me. Let's get into some specifics. I'm, I apologize. Um, I mean, so what's fun is it smells both kind of big and fat and at the same time, like, uh, very aromatic, very kind of like herbs and spices. So you're talking like buttercream cut with grapefruit peel, cut with like pink peppercorns, like just lots of kitchen herbs, rosemary, tarragon. My wife's been making a lot of like roasted veggies recently, so I know that tarragon smell very well at this point. There's even something medicinal in here, like uh, like some old bandages going on. It's, we're not getting near Lefroy here, but it's just a little bit... A little bit like someone had a boo-boo and, you know, had to clean up in, in the same room like a couple of minutes earlier. There's even some vanilla happening on this. And what is... something savory, too. It's not, it's not just like a, a salty, briny note. It's more like, um, this is going to sound silly. You know the, like, fish food, the little fish flakes? 
when you had the fish tank as a kid and you would dump the fish flakes in, maybe you like kind of smelled it every once in a while. There's a little bit of like a fish flake smell on this. And yet you're also getting the kind of prerequisite like salted licorice, olive juice kind of stuff you tend to get more commonly in cane juice based rums. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this. This is bringing something a little bit new to the table. Um, come on, camera, focus. Uh, it's clearly, to, at least to me, like this, this smells like something that is uh, probably mostly using pitched yeast. I don't know if there's any open vat fermentation, but I'm, I, I have to think there's some pitched yeast going in here. Um, but it feels like there's more going on. Maybe there's some open vats or like long fermentations going on. I don't know. It feels like there's a little extra juice going in, going into this. On the, um, I just realized I've left my eyedropper over there, so I'm going to have to grab that in a minute. Again, we, we throw together our tastings these days. On the palate, Nice. From for me, a little bit flatter, um, less multi-dimensional on the on the palate than it is on the nose. But uh, otherwise, it kind of follows similar sorts of lines. It's very fat, but very like sp spicy herbal at the same time. So, you know, like vanilla buttercream. Um, very, very rich mouthfeel. But at the same time, like pepper, kind of like, yeah, aromatic pepper. Um, that toasted tarragon baked vegetables thing I mentioned. Salted licorice, dried lemon peel. That fish food, the fish flakes thing, that's that's here again. Uh, black olive, dried flowers. Yeah, this is fun. This is fun stuff. Um, it's kind of tarry in, in, in a good way. Um, yeah, fun. Fun is, is the best way I can describe this. It's, uh, you, you have to love your, your kitchen herbs. Um, you know, stuff you would dump all over like potatoes and, and uh, you know, carrots and stuff before you threw it in the oven. You have to love that kind of herbaceousness. But if you're in with that, like this is, this is a really nice room. Well, let me grab my eyedropper. Oh, I am sporting my red jammy bottoms tonight because I don't have to go out anymore. Uh, I'm going to give this a couple of squirts. Two. I'm going to guess this will take five, but we'll see. It needs five. Um... Oh, yeah, so let me take the uh, next minute or so to apologize to my subscribers and especially my Patreon supporters for my, I feel like I've been just lacking in prep for the last week and a half because I have been lacking in prep. Like I've, I've been really trying, you know, trying to throw these things together, you know, at the last minute to be able to upload them on time. Um, and you know it's it's worked out i feel like the videos have been okay but at, at the same time like i i don't know i feel like i'm missing stuff i feel like i'm i, I definitely feel like i'm running running ragged um but yeah it's i i still i still enjoy this i still enjoy this and stuff like this is is why like this is 
I don't know exactly what they're doing. I, I don't think it's it's wild fermentation. I don't think it's anything obvious I can I can put my finger on. Maybe it's just the the, the local uh, Thai cane varietals. I don't know, but something is going on here that is very very different from uh, other sorts of cane rum cane juice rum uh, that I've had before. And it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, all right, let's get back into this. Uh, get some, some, see how it's evolved. Get some new notes now that I've added some water on the nose. <laughs> Interesting. It's, it's, uh, there's some sweet, there's some more sweetness that's come through, uh, which is fine with me. You know, something in, in, I know this is gonna sound strange, but something about this is now reminding me of a, like, of a, of a Michoacan mezcal, like a cupriata based mezcal. There is almost like that, an aggressive lemon lime, almost yogurty character. But it's so much more like, like just creamy. Um, yeah, maybe this, let's go with that. This is like if, if you'll play made like a lemon lime flavor, that's kind of what this smells like. You're going to like throw a whole bunch of like tar and like baking herbs and peppercorns, like just mix all that into it. That's kind of what this smells like. And I'm, I'm absolutely here for it. Uh, okay, let's see what happens on the, on the palate. Not less less evolution on the palate than there is on the nose. Um, mostly the same. Becomes a little bit a little bit sweeter again, or presents a little bit sweeter. Put it that way. Um, finish feels about the same. It's not a super duper long finish or a super duper deep finish, but it's very satisfying. Um, yeah. It's a very, very pleasant twist on, for lack of a better way of putting it, an agricole style rum. Um, score wise, I've been kind of stuck between like an 86, 87 on this since I've been, been uh, tasting it. Uh, and I still haven't resolved that up until recording this right now. So I'm just going to give it an 86 plus, which is a total cheat, but there it is. 86 plus for Shaolong Bay High Proof 2020 batch one. I like this. Well worth chasing down if, if it's around and available where you are. Thanks for watching and cheers.